Could you lose your Second Amendment rights just for carrying a holster? You might want to watch this episode of Guns and Gadgets. Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news. If you haven't already, jump on that subscribe button right now, hit it hard, and join this growing freedom family where you will hear all of the Second Amendment news no matter how good, bad, ugly, or indifferent it is. No matter where it happens, I try to make you aware of it here on the channel. And we're going to talk about a lawsuit that's going on that uh, brought up a situation that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. Somebody lost their Second Amendment rights for wearing a holster. Empty. Empty. And this happened in Washington, D.C., the same area where federal courts ruled that their good cause requirement in order to get a concealed carry permit was unconstitutional. But apparently, the chief of police gets to change the rules on a whim. Alan Whitaker, who has had his concealed permit since 2018, if I remember correctly, well, he went to a range with his girlfriend and one other on April 29th. When they left the range, he locked his firearm in a lock box and put it underneath the seat of his vehicle and went about his day. But he left his empty holster on his hip. You know, I don't know if it was leather or plastic, but it's not a weapon, shouldn't matter. On his way back home, they stopped at a convenience store to get a drink, imagine that. And as they pulled into this convenience store, there were two other guys having an argument. Whitaker parked away from this confrontation that was going on, went into the store, purchased some water, and when he came out to his vehicle, he was held at gunpoint by the police. Now the Prince George's County Police went up to Whitaker and patted him down, and that's when they discovered an empty holster. Oof, careful now. They then put him in cuffs, searched his car, and couldn't find the firearm that in their mind should be in that holster. Now I will flip the, the the switch here and thinking as a police officer who's coming to a call of of people arguing uh, I don't know the full details of the call the incident that they were called to respond to but they see somebody coming out they're gonna check to see if he's involved they find a holster yeah obviously it's going to uh, spike their uh, their interest if you will and they're gonna want to find that gun to make sure that it's not going to be used or hasn't been used in this in this altercation Whitaker told the police where that gun was locked in a box in the car. They still had problems finding it. So he showed them where it was and then they confiscated that firearm. And based on a couple of articles that I've read, uh, they still have yet to return that gun. Now during this fiasco, Whitaker's girlfriend was found to be in a possession of a small amount of marijuana, which I guess was legal there, and nobody on the Whitaker side was arrested or cited with any type of criminal violations. Now we fast forward and Whitaker, who still had not received his firearm from the police, why? Sounds like a Fourth Amendment violation to me, but he went out to purchase another firearm, a new gun, since the police weren't giving that one back. And that's where this story gets interesting. In DC, you have to apply to register a new firearm, you beg for the okay to register something. Uh, but uh, Whitaker was told that his registration application was denied. And he also found out that his concealed carry permit was being revoked as well. Why, you might ask? Months later? Well, I'll tell you why. According to the Metropolitan Police Department, the revocation was due to exhibiting a propensity to violence or instability that may reasonably render a person's possession of a concealed pistol a danger to the person or another. If you don't understand all that, that's because it's vague BS. The PD also uh, cited Whitaker's extensive criminal history and cited uh, incidents that they knew about when they said, okay, you're good, you're, you can have this permit back in 2018. And I read an article that Cam Edwards uh, wrote. If you're not familiar with Cam Edwards is, he does a hell of a job on bearing arms and Cam and Co. He, dude's solid. Uh, but he, in his article, he said that uh, the criminal history that they spoke of amounts to a couple of minor infractions for misdemeanor marijuana possession and having speakers that were too loud back in 2007. He was also once accused of assault, no charges were ever brought, and in 07, a charge of carrying a concealed knife in Ohio was dismissed. So 2007, now we're in 2020, 13 years later, and he got his permit in 2018. So they knew all of this stuff. So the chief of the Metropolitan Police Department says now that I am the ruler, and you are not worthy. 
So this original incident, like I said, happened in April of 2019. The problem here is a suitability uh, clause that several states have, which is ridiculous. You could be 100% clean and clear as the undriven snow. Just pure. Never done anything wrong in your life. But if you happen to piss your local chief off somehow, or they just don't like you for whatever reason. Could be that simple. They do have to articulate a reason though. But they can deny you based off of suitability. The chief changed their vision of suitability for him because years ago he had some issues like most people. I mean, who, who doesn't have an issue growing up, right? That's how you learn. But years later, you're going to retroactively burn him. So this lawsuit in D.C., uh, I believe, is a slam dunk. Uh, however, you never know what a court of law is going to do. God forbid they just follow the law. But you have a situation here clear as day where a chief of police have, has reinterpreted uh, a vague clause in order to restrict somebody of their constitutionally guaranteed right, an enumerated right, unalienable right, a right that is given to us by our creator. Okay? The police do not grant you a right. Government does not give you the right to protect yourself. Yet here in Washington, D.C., after being told that they were doing things unconstitutionally for years, they figured out a different way around and are now reinterpreting people's suitability. Amazing. And this isn't the only place this is happening. So I'll keep my eyes on this lawsuit in Washington, D.C. And I want you guys and gals to be aware because this does happen in other places. Massachusetts here is one. Um, so this stuff has to end because in my book, I don't know about you, but my book shall not be infringed means you can't infringe on it. Yet, we're living in a country of infringements. All right, guys and gals, if you found anything in this video that either made you happy, sad, or angry, <laughs> please hit that thumbs up button to help destroy this YouTube algorithm and share this with your friends. This is the only way this news spreads because the uh, big tech people don't want this information out. So I humbly ask you to help in that endeavor by sharing this with everybody. Also, if you carry a gun, concealed or open, doesn't matter. If you carry a gun, if you own a gun, if you go shooting, please join the USCCA where you can make sure that if you ever have to uh, defend yourself or others while armed, that you already have your attorneys and your game plan in order so that you don't have to worry about what's going to happen after. You can join them down below, uscca.com slash gng, and help eliminate that stress now. All right, guys, thank you for your time. I appreciate you all way more than you know. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon, and I will see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.